folks. That's right. We got him. Old friend of the program, Will Hunter. He joins the show for a two-part chat. This is part one today. We talk to young guys. What are his expectations for the season? A whole bunch more fun. Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked on Spartans listeners, thank you so much for kicking off your day with us here at Locked on Spartans. I'm your host, Matt Sheehan, but it's not just going to be me today. No, we get to hear from old co-host of this very program, Will Hunter. And just like in typical me and Will fashion, we recorded forever. Uh, We did not keep it short. So what we're going to do today is part one today. We're going to talk about the young players, Will's expectations for the season, a whole lot of other good stuff. And then tomorrow's show... Just going to continue that chat, talking coordinators, overreactions from week one. It's a great chat because it's always a fun time when Will jumps on this show. So, hey, let's just get to him right now. Folks, the 31-7 to victory over Central Michigan got one man so fired up he had to run to the nearest microphone, but not webcam, as soon as humanly possible. You might know him. He goes by the name of Will Hunter. Will Welcome back on these wonderful airwaves. How on earth are you doing, my friend? Is, is it technically airwaves? I don't really know, man. Dude, I, I don't know nothing about tech. It just sounded cool when I said it, so we're just riding with it, I guess. Just riding with it. That's it. I'm good. I'm good. That's um, good. All right. I just I have a question for you right off the bat. Yeah, wow. Just spinning the tables around right off the shoot. Let's go. All right. Yeah, it's my show. Um, okay. How have you not just like passed out from oxi- oxygen deprivation from how much you're talking these days? I question. All I see is right. Is you just hosting stuff? Yeah, I, I want to get my face in front of as many people as humanly possible because uh, I'm an egomaniac. So I sure if there's a microphone or a webcam, just hop in front of it and talk Michigan State sports. No, I thought you were going to talk about oxygen because like this new studio is very small and like the first week here. There was like paint still laying around like off oh. camera here. And I'll tell you what didn't help. I, I thought they were pretty like Loctite seals. Like, I, no, once I got rid of those paint cans, like I feel way better during recording than, than I did that first week. So I <laughs> I thought nice. that's what you're going to refer to. But no, uh, it's did just you, how much I talk. Yeah. How, how would on earth would I have known that you had previously had open paint in your in your little studio? How would I have known that? slightly open paint i don't know i we're, we're in these group chats well i i always forget what gets talked about during during those conversations so were you um, just uncorking wild takes high on paint i was off like, the record slurring. this is just this is just yeah we're gonna edit all this out you're, yeah your right, bosses yeah. aren't listening to this no and they're they're gonna love this being in the first five minutes of the show um I was like slurring my words at like the third okay. segment sometimes. Like we're, when we're 20 minutes in and like I'm having a hard time like standing straight. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, did I not drink enough water today? Like, oh, what's going on here? And then I, I look at my feet. Oh, it, it's the 12 paint cans that were in this room. Uh, are you, are you standing probably got to go? I am. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we stand up. up, Will. This is a stand up podcast. Yeah. Like yeah. Pat McAfee, huh? Uh, what? Yes, that that is my idol when it comes to the, the podcasting uh, and media landscape All for right. sure. So I have yeah. one more thing, and then you can do okay. your show or whatever. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Is your camera mobile at all, or is that affixed to your laptop? I can, I can, uh, yeah, I can take it off. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Do the studio, sure. This, let me see the room. Yep, studio tour. This is great if you're listening to the podcast. <laughs> Here is uh, I, I got a shot of my bird dog shorts right there. That's a little air conditioning unit because wow, it gets. It gets up to roughly 120 degrees in here. So before a guest hops on, I'll just smash that on for about five or 10 minutes and cool it down to 95 degrees. So we're doing good in here, Will. I think things are going great. Where do you think this setup falls on the like A-list celebrity, B-list celebrity, right? That list. Where oh. Where is your setup, your entertainment setup? Where do you think you fall on that list right now? Northwestern like, football. Okay. It has to be. The, uh, you know, no, no, no. The, the LED lights behind me give us some pop where it's it like Rutgers. It looks good. So. No, it looks good. Thank you. Looks, yeah, we're, we're. Yeah, you put some effort into it, which I appreciate. 
and I had no idea what I was doing, much like this show. I mean, so really what we're looking at right here is kind of a, a mirror image of what goes on in just production and the daily Great. tasks of Lockdown Spartans here. But uh, all right. You thanks for stopping by, Will. Yeah. That, that, you can have that'll show. do it. No, that's that's, that's all. It. I just wanted okay. to ask me oh. a few questions. Yeah, thanks yeah. a lot for stopping by. I appreciate you. Yeah. No, um, well, I am so lazy. No, that's actually not entirely true. Good I actually start. think it's a interesting question here. But I started yesterday's show with a question from Odell Brethem online. How did Friday's game make you feel about this season? Better than you thought before the season? Worse than you thought before the season? Or nothing has really changed. I have to pick your brain on it. And it's a twofold question because I guess, well, what were your expectations before the season started and just one game in against a Mac opponent, but in a dominant fashion, how do you feel? Has it changed how you feel about the season at all going forward? Uh, 14 and one national champions. Oh, boy, here we go. Great. Okay. Okay. You know what? No, that's good optimism. Will. I'm, I'm glad that this time away from the microphone <laughs> no. has sh- shined the light on you. <laughs> Drinking the Kool-Aid, maybe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I mean, I didn't really feel like I had a great grasp on what this team would be, just for an, a couple of reasons. I'm paying less attention, still paying attention. I'm, I lurk. Yeah. I, I see you guys. I see everyone. Right. Right. Um, paying less attention, not as in tune. Like there was the defensive back who they announced before the game left the program. Yeah. I didn't know who that person was. I, I strive to be there one day. I'm not anywhere close to being there, but like, wow, that, that must be a healthy life that you live. That's nice. No, well, it's yeah. other stuff is, is consuming. Oh, okay. No, oh. I mean, honest. So here, full disclosure, I, I bet the over on wins. What okay. Five like and a that. half. Right. Yeah. Five and a half. I thought yeah. realistically, I thought somewhere around seven wins made sense. Seven and five. Um, yeah. A couple of really hard games. On the schedule, felt decent about the crossover opponents, felt even better about yeah. the crossover opponents after watching two of them play. Uh, Amazing. It was a Thursday night. <laughs> it was like, okay, yes, take- Thursday night. Oh, it was theater. Well, it was I theater. Ex- 13 to 10. <laughs> my exact quote was, we don't think Michigan State's going to be better than these two teams. Um, Look, I, I know teams can t- can change over the course of two months when we will yeah. eventually play them. But like Minnesota's yeah. quarterback, he's, he's skipping rocks in a pond out there. It's Jeff rough. Sims. Yeah. Like, well, Nebraska's quarterback is a guy that committed to Georgia Tech to play quarterback in the triple option. Like he he, he signed yeah. up to play quarterback allegiantly there. to not throw the ball. I know, so that's their situation. So you do feel good about that. Yeah. Although, although I think he committed to Jeff Collins. It's semantics. Ah, you, you know what? He looks the part of a triple option quarterback. No, nevertheless. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, you like that? Sorry no. to the Sims family, but yeah. <laughs> he does uh, look like he struggles throwing the ball. Um, you, are, you are correct there. Uh, no, I don't think much changed uh, from Friday night. Uh, it's tough to take too much from a Mac opponent, right? And the central, I mean, they'll be okay, I think. I think they'll do okay in the Mac. They have some good yeah. football players. Um, yeah. uh, on offense, the I think they'll probably struggle a bit. They're gonna. I think they'll run the heck out of it. The, their quarterback is. They have to. Speaking yeah. of struggling to throw the ball, um, yeah. <laughs> he's a really good athlete. He's like a he's really. Oh good. sure. Oh okay. Um, yeah. Cannot cannot throw. And boy, I've never heard such effusive praise for uh, such <laughs> bad quarterback play in my life. I was like. It was, it reminded me of that uh that Indiana kid uh whose mom was on like uh Oh Xander Diamond? Xander Diamond. Is, is that like, who it was? Yeah. It has to be that. It yeah. was like 2015 or something like that. Michigan yes. State with Connor Cook is going to Indiana and the I forget who was doing uh color commentary, but he was just ripping Kirk or not Kirk, ripping Connor Cook every play and like deserve Cook was mid that game. And Diamant completes like it was just such effusive praise for mediocre play, and yes. meanwhile just ripping the dude who <laughs> just went like twelve and two as a starter and threw for school records and all that stuff. It was like, yeah. Anyway, 
I, yeah, n- never heard such effusive praise for such poor quarterback play. Still a lot more to come with our guy, Will, but first need to talk your ear off about eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time that you need parts and accessories for your vehicle, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits just right the first time time around just add your ride to my garage look for the green check to know that the part will fit or it's money back guaranteed because just like in sports confidence is the name of the game and when you shop at ebay motors with over 122 million parts to choose from you're gonna be back in the game in no time after all it's easy to bring home the win with just the right parts when they are guaranteed every time so get the right parts the right fit at the right prices on ebaymotors.com let's ride ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers eligible items only exclusions you got that right they apply and also you want to look sharp this entire fall coming up homefieldapparel.com is the place to be the best clothing site out there and let's say for some reason you know you're not just a michigan state fan so many other schools to choose from one of my favorite things to wear in the winter is a sweet hawaii rainbow warriors hoodie beat the brakes off of that but they are durable they look great and they will feel so incredible on your body so whether you're a spartan fan get yourself a hoodie long sleeve t-shirt or t-shirt or hey just go check out God, just there are dozens, dozens and dozens of other schools they have at homefieldapparel.com, but they're also going to hook you up. They're not going to leave you high and dry. No, no, no. When you go check out at homefieldapparel.com, use promo code LOS23, LOS23, and that's going to get you 15% off of your first order. Again, gang, go check out all of their selection at homefieldapparel.com and check out with promo code LOS23 for 15% off your first order. Uh, but... Rounding it back up, I, I think there's some guys on their defense is pre- pretty solid, especially the front. Uh, we saw mm-hmm. some pretty good football players, so I think they're like an okay MAC team. I wouldn't be surprised if they're bowling, right? A seven and five yeah. type team, they're right. gonna struggle, they're gonna get waxed by Notre Dame, but they'll beat their whatever Portland State or whoever the hell they're playing, and then they'll do well in the MAC. So you try not to take too much of it, but try whatever they should be okay, and you feel solid about beating the, the the point spread by 10 points, right? They're a 14-point favorite. They win by 24. Could have right. been more. Should have been more, um, especially considering at one point it was 7-3 to three with two minutes left in the first half. Uh, so the, what, the last 32 minutes of the game, they outscore them 28-0, and it's like, ah, okay. So, you know, I don't want to change my tune too much. I still think seven, eight wins probably makes the most sense for the team. Okay. I will say this. I'm more interested and excited to watch this team um than i thought i would be okay it, for whatever that's, that's need. worth no that that's that's worth that's worth uh, it's weight in gold for me we want your happiness will and we want you back in the, the michigan state football landscape here nope Maybe we'll, we'll see. We'll table that. Uh, I, I was excited to hear eight wins out of your mouth though. So that already means you're more optimistic about the season than I am because I said look I feel better about this season after just one game against the Mac opponent, but I came into the season expecting six or seven wins. I still think it's six or seven wins, but I just feel a lot more confident about it than I did beforehand. If, if that makes any sense, but yeah, I mean, they get to six without they, they, the big four games, right. We can, yeah. let's, I think we can talk about them later, but like, let's just cross them off. All losses there. Okay. Right? Easy as that. Okay. Yeah. And they get to six. They don't even have to win any of those or Maryland who, who knows in Iowa, like there's some, mm-hmm. yeah, the, the schedule's really top heavy, right? There's Big some time. really good games. And then it's like, Oh, Minnesota, Nebraska, Indiana is going to be very bad. And we know yeah. that that doesn't guarantee a win. Um, Richmond, there, there's certainly a, a good handful of winnable games, especially considering uh, the talent level depth, level seems to be better than it has been the last few years even i mean they don't have kenneth walker so uh um, no. but if you take kenneth walker off the 2021 team this team's probably better than the 2021 team that's an interesting premise i've that has not even crossed and i've been thinking about this team quite a bit here the last few days and weeks that has never crossed my mind that's an interesting it's a different team like oh I sure you, yeah. i told you like if i was gonna list the best players on this team by what grade they're in what class they're in 
Let's talk yeah, about that. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. would be like redshirt freshman, redshirt sophomore, sophomore, freshman, redshirt freshman, redshirt sophomore, junior, freshman, sophomore, redshirt, sophomore, fresh. Like they're so yeah. young. All their good players, all their really talented guys that you're the most excited about, I think are all there's a couple upperclassmen, but it's mostly sophomores and freshmen. They're super young. And you even one of the older guys on the team too, Noah Kim, who had a solid game he's a by sophomore. all counts on Friday. Right, he's he has three years of eligibility, he's which is sophomore. unbelievable. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's been here. He's been here since that Indiana game that you're talking about with Connor Cook for Xander Diamond, but he still yeah. has three he years of eligibility on the table. It's it's yeah. amazing. It's yeah, fantastic. Not, uh, and really, if you uh, go back and watch, which I did because I'm still a sicko. Yeah. Um, it's good if you go hear. back and watch, really, like, and you're like, okay, why did this play go poorly? What happened wrong here? A lot of it was upperclassmen. I know. I know. It's sort of the guys that have been around and have played a lot of snaps, and you're like, well, they're not terrible, but they're also not great. And, yep, there they are, still being not terrible, but also not great. Yeah. And we kind of know what they are. So, and really, like, you expect, you know, uh, Mangum got lost on a touchdown, like, Okay, that's fine. It's fine when they make mistakes, right? But we get like you've been here for six years. Stop screwing up, please. We have seen some ceilings hit, right? Yeah, it's uh, just uh, in yeah a head. lot of ceilings ha- have been hit, but keeping it to the young guys, I-, I have a question here because there are two units that really stuck out to me, at least uh, as far as youth movement goes. The receivers played fantastic between Jerron Glover, and Tyrell Henry. All right, those two young guys, but also the secondary on the defense. Yes, you mentioned Mangum. Got lost in space out there, but he also had a lot of good moments on Friday too. Malik Spencer, uh, retro sophomore, I believe, at the top of my head, and then Dylan freshman. Tatum, retro freshman. Fre- sorry, retro freshman, and uh, Dylan Tatum as well, true sophomore. Like, which young group is impressing you more after just one evening in East Lansing so far? Will is Tatum a true sophomore? I thought he kept his red shirt. I may oh, be wrong. You, know you might be right. He's whatever. No. Him and Spencer are both in the same. I think class. you're right. I'm all over the map with the roster, but no, you're fine. It, how about this? Regardless. Young players will. Yeah, young players. It's like, yeah. it's their second year guys. Like it's their yeah. first time actually playing meaningful snaps and it mattering. Of course. Um, who yeah. impressed me more? The secondary or the receivers? Hmm. Yeah. Out of the out of the youngins. The youngins. Yeah. Uh probably the secondary. Okay. Uh, I think there's a real chance that Malik Spencer in a year is the best player on this team. Um, I can see it. I can see and it. I, yeah. I think there's a real chance that Dylan Tatum in a year is an all conference caliber corner. Um, and Mangum, you know, Mangum earned his way on the field as a true freshman last year and didn't die. <laughs> like, although he got really hurt, didn't he? I shouldn't Try, say it tried his way. best. I tried his say, best. But... I should not say it that way. As soon as I said, like, wait, I think he got hurt. Like, I, I, like, like, bring on the board hurt. 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 I think. Yeah. yeah. Not, not yeah. good. Not good. Sorry. Okay. Uh, all good. <laughs> Mangum, we'll, we'll edit that out too. It's fine. Mangum, yeah, it's all good. Mangum <laughs> earned his way on the field as a true freshman and they threw him into the deep water and he did not sink. How about that? That's better. Uh, we'll take it. So, yeah, that, so there's something good. to be that's said good. for that. And there's there's a lot of young guys behind them too that I'm interested to to get some looks at. Uh, I mean, the secondary was good. They didn't have to face any sort of a, a passing attack. There was one or two bad right. plays. I <laughs> yeah. uh, felt like coverage was closer than we've seen in the past, and that's always good to see. So I, you know, I was certainly impressed with uh, the receiving group as well. Nice to see Glover. We've heard. Even going back to last year a little bit, they're like, yeah, we know he was ranked 800th or whatever, but he's way better than that, like, as soon as he got onto campus. And so to see that uh, come to fruition a little bit was good. And we always, you know, heard good things about Tyrell Henry. And Tyrell Henry played in Michigan and played against smaller schools and and not the greatest competition. So you never know how those guys are going to translate. But I think it's pretty obvious there's some juice there in the return game and he had that amazing catch. And so, you know, that's, that was all nice to see as well. So sir, I was impressed with most of the young guys that played the offensive line, yeah. the freshman sophomore on the offensive line uh, for the most part did a good job. Like, you know, they, like I said, the, the, <laughs> on the offensive line, some of the biggest mistakes came from some of the most experienced guys there. So uh, yeah, I think it was, I was encouraged by, uh, by the youth movement. That's why I'm excited to watch this year it's just like i mean we could talk about this sort of folds into the keon coleman stuff and where this team is and where this program is if we want to take like a, a macro look but like 
just where this team at right now, it's like it's kind of a growth year. You definitely want to make a, a- – yeah, t- t- tis the season. Why, why not take a macro look? Because you're, you're tweeting out cryptic images of screenshots of some teams with really good <laughs> records, Will. What did that one. puzzle mean? One. Okay, no, I'm was, sorry. Yeah. That, no. that, that's, that's on me. I did not do my research then. It was just one. But yeah. And I, I want to call myself out. I did on yesterday's show say that this is the last time to talk about Keon Coleman until he hangs up three touchdowns against Michigan in the college football playoff. <laughs> However, this isn't – this isn't necessarily about Keon Coleman. It, it, it's just no, a way to set no, the no, table no. for like, you know it's what? You what, take it away because yeah, you're, you're going to say it fast. So yeah, yeah it's like, Hopefully. okay. Yeah. Uh, would we rather have Keon Coleman on this team? Duh. I think Duh. so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, call me insane, but yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but if your football mm-hmm. program is, is worth anything, then one really great player transferring isn't, shouldn't kill it. Kenneth Walker left Wake Forest, came to Michigan State, was the third best player in the entire country that year, and Wake Forest won 11 games and went to the ACC title game. For sure, like he's he's gone, and they still were really good because they had a bunch of other good players, a good coach, good system, good scheme, yada, yada. Pittsburgh lost Jordan Addison. Pretty comparable uh, stuff to Keon Coleman. First-round receiver, got a ton of money to go to USC. Great. Yeah. And that's Pittsburgh, man. Uh, and they went 9-4. and four. Uh, we're like a game away from the ACC conference uh, yeah. going to the championship game, like the really good season. TCU lost Zach Evans, who was their best running back. He went into the portal, was the most coveted running back in the portal. Him and Gibbs, second most coveted. Gibbs was number one. Yeah. Uh, he goes to Ole Miss. TCU goes to the freaking playoff, right? It, with their backup quarterback. Everyone forgets like TCU, their starting offense was supposed to be the quarterback who started for them against Colorado. Zach Evans at running back, and they did not have either of those guys, and yet they still managed to win uh, 13 games or whatever. So it totally sucks, but like if you are worth anything as a football program, you can survive that kind of thing. And also, I don't know, uh, Keon, I think I used a baseball uh, analogy with you when we were talking about it earlier. He's kind of like, I don't know, that corner outfielder that gets traded at the deadline to a contender that sort of piece to put you over the top right whereas Mm -hmm. you know he would have been really good here but it also would have been kind of a wasted season for him here um it would have been you know when whatever just pick a really great prospect who's going to the nfl no doubt uh, and who just toils away on a team that's sort of like 500 couple of games over 500 whatever like he's going somewhere with the chance to go to the playoff and i like yes i would love to have kian here but i'm also really excited to see jerron glover have a bigger role because kian's not here i'm excited to watch tyrell henry have a bigger role because of that fitzpatrick gates fought like there's a bunch of really young guys that are exciting in the receiver room and this is where the program is kind of at right now we 2021 Matt shifted expectations and Mel makes a oh, lot of money. Oh, staff dad. makes, yeah. Mel and his staff make a lot of money and I'm not excusing them and they make a ton of money. They need to get real results. Um, but the COVID year really jacked up things recruiting their first full recruiting class. The class of 22 is pretty good. And Hey, that Malik Spencer guy, class of 22, Dylan Tatum, class of 22, Glover, Henry, right? We're starting to see at pace. You're like, oh, that's what it looks like when they get their guys. Oh, okay. Big Dooley. Phillips. Chris Phillips is going to be really freaking good and needs to be a starting guard on this team, like, soon. Sure. Class of 22. Like, right? We're starting to see, like, oh, okay. 23 recruiting class was even better. And Hall is going to play a ton this year. He's going to be the best linebacker on this team by the end of the season. Um, By Joe, who we haven't seen. DePepe who got hurt and then whatever. But like, I want to see where this program is at. I want to see what the young guys can do. I want to watch them grow. We're not a conference contending team this year. They're just not. And they're not even like the next batch below. They're, They're in the spot where they're building a program. And 2021 reset the expectations on the back of one of the best 10 running backs of the last decade in college football, right? 
safely, in my opinion. Something, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Like, it, whatever. Right. It's, like, arguable. Like, the dude was unbelievable. I don't even think it's arguable. <laughs> in, in this neck of the woods, it not arguable whatsoever. And, no. and they did have some – like, Connor Hayward was an awesome football player and is an awesome football player yeah. in the NFL. Speedy Naylor is making – is, like, an important player for the Minnesota Vikings. Like, there's a bunch of actual – upperclassmen pros on that team but now we're sort of in this period where a lot of guys have left and there's not a ton of great upperclassmen um so it's just for me about building for 2025 or 2024 2025 and like gosh with this foundation with these young guys with the freshman and sophomore we saw and hopefully they keep growing like i don't think it's unreasonable that in 2025 it's a team contending for the big 10 so yeah. That's kind of where my mindset is at. That's sort of how I'm viewing this team and, and what I'm looking forward to and why I'm excited is just to watch their growth and to watch Glover continue to make plays, to watch Nathan Carter continue to make plays, to watch Noah Kim get better, um, to watch that secondary grow together, to watch the defensive, the young guys in the defensive line once Joe gets in there, to watch Hall get better, mm -hmm. to watch him take over. And like the dude was a three year captain at IMG. How long do you think it is before he's a captain here? <laughs> right. Not long. Um, so I'm just, week I'm excited four, about that. Right. Yeah. Week <laughs> four. I'm excited to watch the classes of 22 and 23 get better, grow, learn under fire, get destroyed by Washington, whatever, like get better, get reps and just build. And like next year, eight, nine wins the year after that, nine, 10 wins. Right. It, it would make all the sense in the world to me. I, I was starting to get a little disillusioned as we were going up to kickoff because, you know, my preseason excitement was like, hey, week three, Washington, it's at home. It's only a touchdown spread. Like, dogs are going to be a live underdog in that game. And then, Will, be. by the middle of the second quarter against Boise State, um, <laughs> watching the Huskies, I'm like, look, these guys did not lose a step. <laughs> these guys look <laughs> no, even better awesome. than last year against all odds. They're um, awesome. Uh -oh. they have, like, yeah, they have, they have two first-round receivers, and the other one's a pro, too, and their quarterback. It's not go good. The no, they're, uh, they're yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, but, like, I, I don't know. Boy, it's I don't college think, football. Boise is not look. Boise is not Boise, right anymore. It's it's different. Correct. It's still a yeah. quality program, but yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I my my feelings on Wash or yeah Washington haven't really changed much. I'm just glad we don't ever have to play them again after this season. Thank God. You know what? Yeah, because <laughs> enough. I, yeah. Kevin DeBoer needs to go to the NFL. Get out of here, dude. Enough. I'm not. I'm not even prepared to joke about the Washington stuff, man. Because I, you know what? We'll see after week three if I'm prepared to joke about Washington anymore after that. Um, It'll be all right. I mean, we're gonna. I think we'll be able to run the ball on them, and our defensive okay. line is really damn good. So, I mean, I gotta say, with the new rule changes, like you just saw Rutgers the other week. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the other week. I, I should say, literally yesterday uh, right. when this happened. Uh, they basically treated the first quarter like it was the last five minutes of a game where they had a one-score lead, and we're just trying to burn clock for as long as possible. Yeah, they had the ball weird. for more than thirteen. They had the ball for more than thirteen minutes in the first quarter. Will like they yeah. didn't even wrap up yeah. two full possessions. It was insane. But like with the new rule changes of no clock stuff. Yeah, hey, you know what? If, if the if if the Spartan Dogs can just go to the Washington game and just <laughs> ground and pound it ground to it, the point where like. Up, Right to the point where, like, it's a two hour long game because, well, the, the game clock is ticking so fast. Like, that, that that might be a viable solution. Now, I'm not stupid. I know that it is way easier said than done, but uh, yeah. a, a, a boy you can, can dictate dream. it. You can dictate <laughs> yeah. it. Then, uh, honestly, I know there was like, in this, this is one of my favorite things in the world. Um, mm -hmm. I actually just, <laughs> I, I muted a, a well known college football writer who's like a national person. Uh, over this just because I'm I was I can't um I, I, when someone says something along the lines of ah the offensive line struggling to get a push <laughs> that drives me insane um to who it is shoot it was Tom Fernelli oh wow okay gotcha shoot which I, well, I, I want to know that I'll un yeah, no I'll, I'll unmute him I was just like I can't I can't do this <laughs> that is, enough <laughs> it's one of my when someone talks about like offensive line unable to get a push, it always like triggers me because it just 
we expect it like the way I read it is the person saying it expects like, well, we snap the ball and then the five offensive linemen just push the defensive line down the field. I know you do it. Well, I have a, no, I, I have a question. Oh, you have a I question. have a question. Okay. I want to go to something that has been a thorn in not just my side, but the side of a lot of Michigan state fans over the sure. last two years, fourth and one play calling. Let's talk about oh, offensive yeah. line push. It's not so much that, but they yeah, go from that's shotgun. A, that's a, yeah. Please, it's, please, t- I, you know, I don't, I don't care what your answer is. I, I, like my feet are so <laughs> far dug in the sand. I'm up to my neck. Uh, but stop, okay, stop yeah. going from shotgun, right? Like th- that is lunacy. Well, it's I mean, I, again, I, I don't. Okay. From the sorry. N- not under center is what I should have said. Yeah. It's fun because when you go like, <sighs> Matt, I don't know. I don't know if you know this, but pistol versus shotgun, it sort of changes the angle on zone, uh, zone read, right. Or any sort of QB involved option play um, where it sort of condenses things down. Um, so I, I, I don't love pistol. I would rather do shotgun okay. than pistol from fourth and one. Cause I say neither personally. Just, uh, that's, first, yeah, yeah. Personally, I'm just like, all right, can we just run some sort of like power play? Like they were, and you know what, man, freaking Baldwin, they, they ran a couple like uh, sort of insert plays where he would pull from left tackle and come up and sort of like center would block down right guard kicks out. And they like sort of create a crease right up the, two hole essentially the zero hole right up the middle and then mm-hmm. um baldwin would pull around and sort of scoot around the guard and, and follow the center and like they were he was getting there and they were finding some success with that i'd rather run something like that even though it's like not it's slower developing than a slow developing inside zone and you know i don't i'm not gonna champion the play calling on fourth and one certainly but also i'm not gonna blame jay johnson when you're fifth year senior guard gets beat across his face at the snap on an inside zone. Like, it's just like, dude, just did not like, like watching that. Yeah. No, did not it's, like watching it's, that. it's like, <laughs> and he had just, uh, I don't know. It, it seemed like he was like hurt or sick or so. Like it was just so, it was probably the worst I've ever seen him play. Um, it's just a night to forget essentially just like that Benson dude, number 10, just, had his way uh but that play like just sticks out because you beat him across his face instantly and just like smashed into into carter and it probably because the only other person if that didn't happen the only other person on that one uh was the safety coming down and it's like okay carter's meeting the safety in the whole one-on-one they're gonna collide at the line of scrimmage or you know he's just got to fall forward and he would have fallen forward like but 300 pound dude uh, changes the the physics on that. So yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it's like, it's partly like, Hey, let's call better stuff, but also, Hey, just don't have the worst rep of the night on that play. It, th- that was not fun to watch on replay. Uh, obviously we, we know there is better for him out there, but yeah, when that play happened, yeah. I was like, Oh my God, yeah. they got whooped on the line. Why, why do we have like, was that true freshman Dellinger out there? Oh my God. No. It's the fifth year senior. Oh yeah. no. It was but, hey, it's Tough small round. sample size, small sample size, right? It's just one game, right? So, yeah. So, I mean, I'm not like, so I don't sick know. Of fourth and one though. I'm just yeah. So sick of fourth I know, I'm one. with you. Fourth and one, but also having mango healthy at running back. He didn't play. Um, of course, I have a hard time like guy. putting all my hopes on. I, I know, I, I know he is, but like I have a hard time pinning all my hopes on. Like, oh, this running back will solve everything because Nathan Carter is already a good running back, and obviously yeah, the discipline of the short yardage situation. But it, it shouldn't take no, it shouldn't having Jaron Mangum healthy to convert no. fourth and one against no. Central Michigan. I, no, I mean, and that's, that's, like, that's the issue. Yeah, and like this sort of brings us back to the whole push thing. Like the yeah. idea that like, oh, well, they're not getting pushed. That does, like that's not how it works. Like you don't just push. Right? A little more it's, complex. It's a little more like, complex. Yeah. It's where it's a lot of like working in tandem. And and really I, I talked to you about this. A lot of the mistakes came from the uh who was that center? Doesn't matter. The center, whoever was playing center, because Say Mac was banged up. Right. Oh, sure. Was it? Uh, did, did Fincher. Fincher get some run? Yeah. yeah. It's like, his, yeah, right, it's his, yep. his first time, like, ever 
playing actual yeah. college football, I believe. Welcome uh, to the just, game, son. Yeah, right. and it yeah. just took him – It like he was, he was so much better in the second half. But, like, the first half when mm. things were really bogging down, like he had a really bad half. Like, And I've seen – if you – it's always fun when you watch someone's, like, first college snap as an offensive lineman. Oh, God, I can't remember who it was. Someone last year. Um, and, like, they, the guy got hit, the whoever it was last year, it got driven back three yards instantly. <laughs> And you could just tell they're like, oh, okay, <laughs> this right. is what's happening. Because it's like the last right. time they that the last time they hit someone in a competitive game, it was you getting ready for an algebra two test with cold Correct. Bosco sticks in your stomach. Like <laughs> yes. that's who they were blocking. And now it's a 310 pound person who's like really trying to set up his family with generational wealth. Like <laughs> that's it's a Correct. Different- it's yeah, yeah so I mean, it's always poor, poor fincher like central's like hard. two defensive tackles i think have like they're a good. combined 50 or 60 yeah. starts in their career yeah. like 72 and 10 were, were really good players yeah. both of them are um right. so those so that's like i can excuse that but that like the entire first half that was like the problem is he was having a tough time and duplain had four or five like really uncharacteristically bad plays right. everything else was fine like you would watch it and you're like oh that's blocked well except for 72 is hitting the running back or pushing the running back to not where he's supposed to go because he beat the center or whatever. And so you saw it get cleaned up in the second half once Fincher was able to settle in and say, Mac, uh, I mean, you could tell like he wasn't healthy enough to start, but they're like, you need to get out there, Nick. Like we're struggling. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so he got out there, things settled down and then Fincher got some more run in the second half and did, it did much better. Um, but I was really encouraged with like when they rotated in Boyd, I thought he looked pretty solid. I, they rotated in uh, Phillips at right guard. Vandemark had yeah. a couple. He was a, uh, Gino was a little bit up and down. He had some really good plays, uh, mm-hmm. but he had a couple tough reps too. I thought Baldwin was fine. They brought in Blackstock, and I think Blackstock needs to be a starter on this offensive line sooner rather than later. Gotcha. I understand you know, getting a new guy into the flow. He just got here this summer, right? It takes time, even though he's a developed kid, it, it just takes time. So I think there's, you know, among the nine or so, I think there's probably even 10, right? Yeah. I don't think anyone stayed the whole game. So among the 10 guys that saw meaningful time on the offensive line, I think you're going to find a solid five. That's like, Hey, this is a pretty good offensive line that. Yeah. Will they struggle against Penn state and Ohio state at times? Probably, but they're going to be just fine uh, against most opponents, I think. 